Hi, welcome to the first episode of the History Hold podcast, where we will talk about all things forgotten history, obscure history that really does not matter in time, didn't influence time at all, arguably. Uh, I am Will, uh, one of your hosts, and this is my co-host. Dominic. Uh, this is... Adam. And today we are covering the forgotten 18th century, or for you less educated people, the forgotten 1700s. Um, we all research topics about that and we are going to draw out of the history shoe, which is the converse that I took off 15 minutes ago because we did not have anything else. And we're not now going to tell you in order from on your screen left to right who what we researched. So Dominic, start. Okay, so uh, I researched the uh, New York getting a botanical garden in 1801. Uh, Terrare, you know, doing Terrare stuff in 1772. The Swedish coffee ban in the 1700s, and a little bit of the uh, Great Frost of 1709. Yeah, uh, I researched the Great Frost of 1709 completely with help from him, of course, and I researched the Maratha Navy and Shivaji. I researched the forgotten state of Franklin and a little bit about a colony owned by Dutch. Okay. South Africa. So South Africa, essentially. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, so we all have some pretty interesting ones. This all started off with Terare, actually, with a weird video on YouTube that was very enjoyable. Credit to Sam Imelda Academy. Yeah, Sam Imelda Academy is great. Okay. So now we're going to start. And if either of y'all have any questions or if I have any questions, feel free to ask. And we have computers and phones research off of to make this content better. All right. Dominic, would you I'm not touching that shoe, dude. Okay. <laughs> you want to? Mm -hmm. it smells, it smells pretty good, too. I, work, I worked out in that shoe yesterday. All right. First one, Swedish ban of coffee. Dominic, that would be you. Okay, so um, in the 1700s, a bunch of people were drinking coffee. I'm not sure why, but, you know, people really loved coffee. But the government was thinking that people were going to be planning revolts, riots, and other unfun things in the coffee shops. So... The government banned coffee paraphernalia and coffee. Coffee paraphernalia being like coffee cups, like tea cup or cup. Um, the they, they kettles. Like, they just like went out in the streets and just smashed everybody's coffee cups and like, no, nah, just stop. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, they banned it four times between 1746 and 1817. And in 1756, they banned it completely. People still drunk it, but like... It was on the black market instead of, you know, legally being able to be bought. I'm not sure why they banned it, though, other than the malcontents of version. I mean, I mean, I could see it because, uh, like, this morning, actually, I actually had a problem with it. My sister freaking was like, I need my coffee. And I was like, dude, you're in sixth grade. You don't really need your coffee. And I can see that with, like, people just being completely addicted to it and it making them hyper and giving them energy they don't need. But I also saw something about Swedish coffee, which is really weird because it's, like, they use weird ingredients. They, it was actually your YouTube shorts. Oh, really? <laughs> and it was, they put an egg in the coffee. Oh, yeah. So. That was, it was very, it was very strange. And doesn't look like it would taste very good, in my opinion. <laughs> Adam, you got anything on this? Not, not really, other than I drink coffee about once a day. <laughs> it's not like I OD on it, so. Yeah. My papa was, is in the hospital, and he... He thought all of his water was coffee, and he was saying how good it tastes. It was pretty funny. <laughs> he was his out of it. All right. You already... um, and to prove his position on coffee was sound, King Gustav, I think it was King Gustav, I don't know, of, some guy named of Gustav Sweden. of Sweden, ex experimented with identical prisoners to um, demonstrate its bad effects, and uh, he came up with nothing. So the Swedish government, they lost the battle, and they just decided to tax coffee. Interesting. In Venice, and put and impose a stiff import tax instead. So just to oh yeah, and they passed another off. oh yeah, and after um, King Gustav's assassination, they banned it again. <laughs> nice. So oh, and, Gustav was good. sorry. He was, he was the good guy in there. Yeah. And the other thing, the Prussians tried to ban co ban coffee in 1777 because they wanted people to drink more beer. <laughs> drink more beer. I will never be drinking beer. <laughs> All right, back to the shoe. <laughs> no, that will never. I get funny. Where are they at? They're, they're down in. They're down in there. 
Terrare. I'm going to put this back in there because Dominic will have gone twice. Okay. The Great Frost of 1709. Actually, don't get it confused with like the much warmer Great Frost of 1600s. <laughs> okay. So the Great Frost of 1709. It was the, the coldest winter recorded in 500 years, which is insane. And... I don't even know how 500 years before 1709 how they recorded the weather, but it's whatever. With uh, heads. Yeah, with with just feeling, I guess. So pretty much, I'm gonna reach off the sheet. Sorry about it. Uh, so the Swedish invasion of Russia during the Great Northern War uh, was severely weakened by the freezing temperatures. Uh, it killed around 2,000 Swedish troops, and Russia was prepared. So they had little loss contributing to their victory in Poltava that summer. I feel like I've heard something else about people dying of cold in Russia and it really helping the war effort, honestly. But do y'all know what I'm talking about? Which war? The Revolutionary War? It wasn't the Revolutionary. It was somebody that was invading Russia. France. Was it France? And they it's went in there. They went in there and and they were chasing Russians and they burnt everything. The Russians burnt everything. Oh yeah, um, they did scorched earth tactics where they would like yeah. burn all their crops, kill all their livestock as they were retreating, so that the people can, so Napoleon couldn't get any. Oh yeah, so it was France. Okay, I do remember that now. Okay, so uh, France, as we, I'd say it's a coincidence, also felt the effects. Uh, they called it the Le Grand Hiver or or the Great Frost. And they lost a massive total of 600,000 citizens to freezing and famines, which is insane to me. Oh, and um, during the um, invasion of Russia by Napoleon, he came in there with 600,000 men, and because of the Great Frost, he came back with 100,000. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, pretty much common theme here is just France losing a crap ton of citizens to cold I guess. Uh, and after the thaw came, everybody was still relieved. Psych. They, it got even worse because after it thawed, it, everything flooded. All their crops that were left flooded. All the streets flooded everything. And you can imagine all the poop in the streets because they didn't have plumbing back then. just mm. went everywhere. And it was all that smelly. Okay. Uh, so, uh, like I said, the agriculture industry was ruined. And there was crazy inflation. So something that we know very well. And about a century before, there was another frost that froze the Thames River. And it was not as cold. So that just gives you an idea that a frost years before that could freeze the Thames River wasn't even as cold as this frost. So, uh, and many people, it's actually crazy, it happened overnight. And many people just died in their sleep that night and had no idea why. They just, they just froze to death. <laughs> And imagine just waking up in heaven, just like, bro, what happened? Yeah, they're just really cold in heaven for no reason. Adam, any comments? I think that's crazy, because a lot of people think the weather this morning was cold, but compared to that, yeah. I don't know if it's... Yeah, we live in Georgia, so like northern Georgia, and it's it's not that cold here. I mean, Halloween compared. was cold. Yeah. yeah, Halloween was pretty cold, walking around the white beater. <laughs> All right, back to the history shoe here. Um, I don't know why I said it in the table, because we're drawing out of it. Uh, Dominic. Yeah, give me the history shoe. Oh, wow, you're a lot more enthusiastic now. <laughs> Is it nice and sweaty? You shut up. You like how it feels, don't you? <sighs> Just pull it out, bruh. Of course, I get Terrare. Terrare. Okay, <laughs> Adam, we'll get you one day. Here, we'll just... All right, so... Yeah. All right, so Terrare, um, he was a man, and he was born in Lyon, or Loin? L Y O N. Let's say Loin because it's funnier. Yeah. In France in the year of 1772. He got kicked out of his house because his parents couldn't afford to feed him because his appetite was huge. He could eat like a fourth of a cow by the time he was 10. Probably. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, he would flood their outhouses, if you know what I mean. And um, <laughs> he would eat a bunch. Like he would eat them out of house and home. So, uh, yeah, oh yeah, here it is. Uh, by the age of 17, he was eating the, the equivalent in food of half a cow. So, like the, like the poundage or whatever? I guess, yeah. So, so uh, eventually, he ran with a uh, group of uh, mis miscreants? Mi misfits? Misfits, say misfits. Mi misfits. Where he would, um, they would rob people, and he would eat people's goats, like, whole. Like, he would get goats, and he would just eat them whole. Because his mouth was so big, he could just do that. He's cool. Yeah. 
Um, I just looked it up, and it said the cow normally weighs about 340 to 460 pounds on average. So half of that would be about 200 pounds on a good day. So he's eating 200 pounds of food a day by the time he was 17. Okay. It's pretty, it's pretty crazy. Sounds fake. And so uh, he eventually decided to leave his um, life of crime behind, and he became a street performer. Or he would eat things like buckets of corks, apples, rocks. Yeah. Pinch anything inedible. Yeah, pretty much anything. Until one day, until one great day, um, he got a severe intestinal blockage, and they had to take him to a hospital, where they treated him with the strongest laxatives that the 1700s had to offer. Now, uh, do, you, do you guys want to take a moment to picture that? The picture of the strongest laxatives? No, Terraria using the strongest laxatives. Uh, like, what do you mean picture it? So he's like, just... Sitting there and paying on the toilet, and it's just, <laughs> it's just coming out. Yeah, um, like open the floodgates. <laughs> Some fiber cereal. Okay, so I'm just gonna read. Um, I'm just gonna read like right off the page real okay. quick. Cause this is a, uh, a direct quote from some history website. <laughs> <laughs> with a large lip, lipless mouth, stretched wide beyond human regularity and filled with stained teeth, he ate corks, stones, entire baskets of apples, one at a time in quick succession. And live animals, his favorite was a snake, for the movement, movement for the morbid amusement of repulsed onlookers that were challenged to satiate his seemingly insatiable appetite. And he weighed no more than 100 pounds. Like, he was really thin, even though, you know. Yeah, yeah. that's crazy. Okay, he stunk like... He stunk... And that's for, like, 1700 peasant standards. Yeah, yeah. Didn't someone say you could, like, visibly see the stink lines yeah, on Yeah, and him? there are comments that he could that he had stink lines. Like, yeah. So, uh, yeah, after going to that hospital, he would... So, bloodletting was a thing back then where they would just, like, let your blood go. Like, they would let it drain to cure stuff. It's actually probably one of the better remedies back then. Yeah. <laughs> and he would drink people's blood. Like, he would, he would drink their bloodletting. And, some, and sometimes he would go to the morgue and he would try to eat corpses. That's always fun. Yes. Yeah. Just trying to sneak in there and grab a corpse. Okay. <laughs> Just get a quick bite. Yeah. So uh, he thought that the empty hole in his heart, or the emptiness inside of him, was because he didn't have a purpose, so he joined the military. Nope, he was just hungry. Um, yeah. So yeah, he, w he, got, he got enlisted as a spy because he could eat stuff. Or, well, more specifically because... The general made him eat a box, and it passed through him in mint condition. So they gave him a 30-pound bucket of bull organs. He ate, he ate it in one sitting. And they sent him off to Prussia to deliver some vital information. And the vital information was inside of him. Mm-hmm. Correct, yeah. The thing is, though, he couldn't speak any German, and he was running around eating garbage and mutilating small animals, so he got caught. Um, they, he, after threatening... After they threatened him with torture, he immediately gave up. Like, he immediately said that he was carrying vital information through his stomach. So they, um, they changed him to, chained him to a toilet, and <laughs> eventually the box passed, and it turned out it was nothing important. So they gave him a severe beating, mock executed him, and they let him go because they pitied him. They, were, they felt sad for him. They let him go. His, his in-captor. Felt that so felt sorry for him while they were in a war together. Yeah, that's right. crazy. That's that's beyond belief right there. So any more on this insane? Oh movie? yeah, uh, I haven't even told you about the time he had a baby. Mm, that's so, okay. Let's say that this is completely rumored, and if you don't want to believe that he ate a baby, don't you don't have to. So. Yeah, yeah. So um, after he was in the hospital again, you know, because they were doing a bunch of experiments on him, like, one time they fed him a lot of live eel, he ate it whole, crushed its head, and swallowed it. Same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. And so, uh, yeah. So after that happened, uh, a baby went missing. And because, you know, Terare is Terare, they suspected him. So he, they, they kicked him out, and like five years later, he came back to that hospital, claiming that he swallowed a golden fork and was really sick. But it turns out he had tuberculosis, and he died. <laughs> oh, and some uh, fun common. facts. Uh, some fun facts about it that'll maybe. Um, so they think that he had um, a hookworm, a roundworm, or like um, Prater Willie syndrome, something like that. Huh. I think it, but uh, Terrari, he was completely sane. Ish. Okay, but not completely, but he was. <laughs> he could. 
He could think, okay? He wasn't, he wasn't so, ahead of you. So the Prater Willie syndrome, because you showed me something, it was like, it's like where his stomach, I'm going to put a, we'll put a graphic up, but his stomach is like giant, right? Yeah, yeah, like his stomach was like most of his body and the rest of it was... Just like everything. mushed up here, like his yeah. heart was up here, well, up here. <clears throat> And everything else was just squished up, and his intestines were large yeah. as well. So, but we'll put a graphic up for the for the video listeners. But yeah, and uh, that was for the audio listeners. Yeah, yeah, that, was, that description was for the audio. We're still getting better at this. Yeah. All right. Uh, you good? You got some more? That's it. That's, That's all the Terrari. Yeah. It's like, it's like Tyler, but like <laughs> in the seventeen hundreds. I keep saying names and nobody knows. Okay. Are y'all ready to go back to? We're gonna do the first segment, the first different segment of. It's called Google it, and we are going to take Terrare, and we are going to put his name into Google, and see what the first thing and or the most obscure thing is that we can find. Uh, I don't believe Adam has any way to look it up. Actually, you can use the history. You got it. Yo, oh, you man got it. All right. The history. Process. You got. You got something. Yeah. yeah okay. All right, we're just going to look it up, and whatever we can find, and the first thing we'll find, we'll tell you. Okay, so. I was fumbling with my phone, and I caught it, and we're trying to find. Okay, we can just speed this part up, so there's no point in stopping it. This, this. Okay, okay, I'm, I'm just going to rip from the Wikipedia, from the Wikipedia blurb. Okay. You want, we're, 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 Are we recording? Yeah. All right, so what I got for the Google it is um, for, directly from Mr. Wikipedia himself. Hmm. Terrare, sometimes spelled Tarar, was a French showman and soldier noted for his unusual appetite and eating habits. Able to eat vast amounts of meat, he was constantly hungry. His parents could not pro provide for him. Uh-oh. Clicked on Wikipedia. And That's... he was turned out of the family home as a teenager. That's what I got, too. That's, he was born in, Ly uh, what Lyon. do we say, Lyon, <laughs> Lyon, France in 1772, and he died in 1798 at the age of 26 in Versailles, France. Uh, he's known for extreme appetite. And I see a bunch of pictures on, on here of him, and he kind of looks like, it's kind of like the situation with Buddha, where they it depict him as a very fat man. But he's act, he was actually really skinny. And same with Buddha, but... So yeah, that's, in, that's untrue. He only weighed about 100 pounds at best, 120. And I don't know if you ever mentioned... Whenever he did eat as much as he did, like oh, as yeah. much as he could, his you would get an octomom go. Yeah, his belly was like giant, but it was all like very tight. Adam, what did you find? Just the same crap. Uh, I I scrolled down a little bit, but for Terrara and Google it, I saw something that what disease did he suffer from? And it says continuous exudative diarrhea, which I thought that was pretty cool. As pretty cool or pretty funny? <laughs> I think it's pretty diarrhea. funny. No, it's cool. Diary is cool. <laughs> That's what you call the strong and laxatives the 18th century could provide. All right. <laughs> I say time for the shoe. Again, Dominic likes the shoe now. I'm going to draw this time. Uh, the Maratha Navy and Savaji. Uh, fair warning, this was a last minute one, but I found it and was like, I'm putting that in because it's cool. <laughs> so... Pretty much, uh, I took world history last year. We learned a little bit about like Sandra Gupta and early India and early modern India and stuff. And this kind of resonated with me ish. But so, pretty much, there's this guy named Shivaji. He's pretty significant, actually. You probably know him if you're in any in India history. Uh, and he pretty much he was a one of the most distinguished leaders in the Maratha Empire. And honestly, out, in my opinion, he was one of the best leaders in that period like he was very progressive and he let people serve in his ranks by skill and intellect rather than like birthright and stuff so um and about the maratha navy this is mainly what it's about Sh shivaji wasn't even in he wasn't even alive in the 18th century but the maratha navy was so pretty much shivaji formed it even though uh so i think the maratha empire pretty much came from the mughal empire and Shivaji, the, Mughal the Mughal Empire is like, uh, it was like India, pretty much, back then. Uh, a little bit of Persia, I think. But, uh, so, before, so Shivaji, Shivaji was part of the Mughal Empire, and then he branched off and made the Maratha Empire. And 
the Mughal Empire never had a navy because think about India, they didn't really, I mean, the British came, but that was mainly land. I mean, they didn't really have any sea conflicts. So before the Maratha Empire came and the Portuguese started invading off the coast, they didn't need empire, a uh, navy. But Shivaji took it upon himself to form one. And he did it because of the Portuguese, as I said. And uh, he commissioned the first building of the first naval vessel of India in a small creek near the Ul Has River, which I'll show a picture of that in 1654. So we are 50 years before what we're talking about. Uh, he was. Uh, I have some more stuff about Shivaji, but I'll go back to that later. Um, most of the naval bases were built along the coast of... Pardon me, but I think it is Maharashtra. I don't know. Okay, uh, but it consisted of mostly native sailors and was commanded by mercenaries. And this was the interesting part to me, that I think y'all will find interesting, is that the mercenaries that commanded the army were mostly Portuguese, the people that they formed the navy to fight against. So the this navy, which by the 1700s was consisted, so throughout... 50 year span they had 20 warships and it doesn't sound very impressive but warships were they were probably pretty huge and like they you'd probably be in awe if you saw them and they're probably pretty hefty and expensive to build so most of these warships were commanded by the portuguese for the maratha empire and most of the sailors were haters of the portuguese they were natives to the maratha and the Mughal empire uh, multiple other people worked for them, and eventually the Portuguese did get their mercenaries to stop working for the Maratha, and that really hit the Maratha Navy hard. But uh, they did, they did, uh, the Portuguese came back when they allied with the Maratha Empire against the Mughals in a, I don't know which war, I didn't really see that. Well, that's all I got for that one. I know it's not the most interesting one, but yeah. What do y'all have? I mean, I got the uh, botanical garden. No, I'm saying, what do you what do you got on the oh, okay. Maratha Navy? I know you're you're worried about time, <laughs> but I mean, I don't really got anything. You don't got anything. I say I did think that was pretty interesting. Though. Yeah. Yeah, it was kind of. Cool. I guess so. Okay. Uh, so back to the thing. We're running long time, but next week should be better. You know. We can always come here. All right, we got two. We have the state of Franklin, which is very interesting. And the Botanical Garden, New York's Botanical Garden. Well, the Botanical Garden is really short. I can just real quickly. Okay, let's hear it. The Botanical so, um, Garden. So, in 1801, yeah, not the 17th century, close enough. Whatever. Yeah, we agree it was close enough because it's pretty interesting. Yeah. So, um, 20 acres of Manhattan farmland. Some doctor named uh, David Hosack, Ho yeah, Hosack, he wanted a medical and agricultural facility that would nurture this his young nation, also known as the U.S. So, um... He got uh, 3,000 plants, native and non-native, and um, he planted them in New York in a botanical garden on 20 acres of land. And um, the people who contributed this were the Aaron Burr. I've never heard of him. Aaron Burr, he's uh, he was the guy that killed Alexander Hamilton. Oh, okay. And Thomas Jefferson, which, you know. Yeah. yeah. And he used this garden to... Dude, some of the earliest pharmaceutical... Okay, we're done with that. No All offense. Right. And state of Franklin, hurry fast. All right, so the state of Franklin was supposed to be the fourth, 14th colony uh, during the American Revolution. But anyways, so the whole reason that it came to existence was North Carolina was, or I guess the whole American government was kind of poor and broke at that point. So they wanted to take away some, some land from North Carolina and trying to help the economic problems that they had. But people who settled on that land, they felt, they feared that they would have to deer, I mean, deal with some of the Native American population, which at that time they had some problems with, but I don't think that they had any problems with them. But people on the land, they were... So I'm going to interrupt you. Is yeah. This is the Frank land right now, right? Yeah, hold on. And so with this... This would be in South North Carolina? Yeah. And was this before South Carolina became a thing? I have no clue. Okay. <laughs> okay. Continue. Yeah. And this land is in uh, the eastern Tennessee area, 
I guess some of Western North Carolina, and it was called Franklin. But anyways, they tried to draft a state constitution with Congress and all that stuff, but it never ended up working out. And then, but during Congress, they uh, the 13 states voted in favor of them becoming an actual state, but it failed the two-thirds majority rule that was there at that time. But then later on, they decided to change their name from Franklin to Franklin to Franklin, try and get the support of Benjamin Franklin, which didn't work out. And that's pretty much it for the colony, and they never really became big. And then the land went back to North Carolina. So, moral story, Benjamin Franklin is not easily swayed by <laughs> little gimmicks. Yeah. And that two-thirds majority Congress vote thing is complete BS. Mm -hmm. And that's democracy for you. I love democracy. Sometimes. sometimes. Only on Tuesdays. Have, let's stop getting political here. <laughs> Can't have Dominic anywhere. Dang it, Dominic. Cut to that wide shot. All right, so anybody got anything else left? Or are we good? I have something else I thought was pretty cool. Okay. I'll just read it on the paper since I wouldn't, I'm not too fond of it. But most people think of the early American colonies as the associated countries of France, Spain, Spain, and Great Britain. But Sweden actually had a colony in parts of Delaware, Pennsylvania, and New Jersey. It was called New Sweden. It was the least populated colony, the smallest and shortest longing out of any other colony. And the colony never had more than 100 inhabitants and only lasted 17 years before being captured by the Dutch. Do you think that that, that colony had a coffee ban dominic probably not the new sweden well actually wait wait how long was it 17 years so well, i mean wait wait when did it start oh, i don't have that written down so but it was sometime during the 1700s it was before the american revolution yeah so 1740 so i mean if it was between 1746 and 1817 then yeah yeah maybe and then do you have the constitution the Constitution of the United States, or the State of Franklin? Yeah, I have the Constitution of the State of Franklin. It says, your committee appointed... You've got to read that. That's going to be boring. Yeah. Uh, but we got a graphic here <laughs> of it. We don't actually... It's really weird pointing to nothing. But pretty much it's just... Uh, to the audio listeners, it's just a... Uh, it's just a boring law document. That's the Constitution of the State of Franklin. It's very short, actually. Is that just the, a part of it? or? Yeah, this is just part of it. Yeah, it's just a part of it. Okay. So I think that that wraps up, I think, our podcast. Does anybody got any other ideas to add on? Anything that we've researched recently? No. Nope. That's interesting. Nope. Nothing? <laughs> well, we will be back next week at the same time, same place, with better content, hopefully. Uh, what is next week? I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> so, uh... uh this, it's the, it's remembering, uh, Japan. Forgotten Japan. Oh, uh, yeah. Can I do the important? Can you do the end part? What's the end part? You know, uh, like, subscribe if you like the podcast, we're and not, eat your uh, Wheaties. And we're not liking, <laughs> subscribing, and eating Wheaties. Well, like but, and subscribe to uh, no, the YouTube but... channel. <laughs> All right, come back next week. Uh, I don't know what to say. Y'all just want to... Eat your what? Wheaties. Yeah, eat your Wheaties, guys. All right, we're good.